This is Merkel cell carcinoma, or a primary cutaneous neuroendocrine carcinoma. And these tumors usually arise in sun-exposed areas in older individuals. And uh, most importantly, they're really important to recognize because they often uh, behave quite aggressively um, and a significant number of patients will develop metastases and eventually die from disease. So they're a really bad tumor uh, and you definitely don't want to miss it. And from low power, kind of a blue tumor filling the dermis in an older sun damaged person, really easy to think about basal cell carcinoma in some cases. So if you're just looking at low power and not thinking about it, it'd be easy uh, to make that mistake. And that's a real pitfall because even though they're both carcinomas, basal cell carcinoma is uh, very rarely causes mortality and this tumor commonly does. And they're treated very differently. So it's really important to uh, learn to recognize if you see a cellular large um, blue looking tumor or a carcinoma looking, it looks like a, you know, kind of like a basal but real dark and real cellular from low power. Always think about Merkel and if you even think about it, go look closer and, and take some time to, uh, to, to make sure that you're not missing that. So let's go a little closer and look and um, like I said, Merkel cell carcinoma is actually a form of uh, neuroendocrine carcinoma that arises in the skin and it has similar uh, features to those seen in other types of neuroendocrine carcinomas, particularly uh, small cell carcinoma of the lung. So if you know what small cell carcinoma looks like in the lung, uh, you basically know what Merkel cell looks like. It has a, a lot of similarities uh, histologically. So the cells are arranged in kind of nests or aggregates. Sometimes they can be sheet-like and diffuse. Uh, sometimes they can make large nests, other times small nests. Uh, one big difference uh, that you can, you'll can you notice when you look a little closer is they lack the basal palisading that's seen in basal cell carcinoma. So basal cells usually have palisaded nuclei around the outside and it's pretty uncommon to see that in Merkel cell. I've, I've seen it before but it's not very common. So even though these are blue and kind of basaloid, they don't arrange themselves in the same way that basal cell carcinoma would. And if you look closer at the nuclei, the nuclei do, uh, like I said, they do similar things to what you see in other types of neuroendocrine uh, tumors. For one thing, they have this very kind of pale or, or fine smudgy uh, chromatin. People use salt and pepper chromatin and I, I don't really love that term. I think it doesn't really look like salt and pepper to me, but people say that I like the the words stippled or fine or homogenous or dusty kind of chromatin, but you know, like all visual terms in pathology, you have to use the visual term that works for your mind. And the other thing is that look at what the nuclei do. You can see that the nuclei, they clump together and they mold to their neighbor. They're squished together and fit perfectly with the neighboring cells. They're not perfectly round. When they, when they bump into a neighbor, instead of staying round, they kind of squish together and uh, take on the shape of their neighbor. Like, look at that guy. He's got kind of a little triangular point on one end. Let's see if we can get a little bit higher power even for the video. Yeah, perfect. You can see those cells are just squished and molded perfectly together. They have this very fine, kind of dusty, smooth chromatin. They may have some small nucleoli, but usually um, uh, Merkel cell does not have large, huge nucleoli. Uh, so that's kind of a clue. And here's, a, here's again that kind of, it's a little bit hard to get the, to pick up on the video, the exact quality of the chromatin, but it does have this kind of uh, stippled, or I guess kind of salt and pepper is what people talk about, little tiny dots of chromatin uh, in there. And occasionally you can see structures like this that are kind of uh, almost rosette-like, where the, the cells are kind of making a little, uh, little flower shapes. So sometimes you can see rosette type of figures in um, neuroendocrine carcinomas. Those are nice rosette looking things there. I don't, I don't find that a a real a helpful diagnostic feature, but it is something you can see. And I've seen some that were even kind of spindled looking, so they don't always have this exact um, this exact pattern. But in any case, this is a Merkel cell, and you probably have noticed already there are mitoses everywhere in this tumor. These tumors are some of the most mitotically active uh, cancers of, of any of the cancers that I see in my practice. And the uh, the mitotic rate, we when we um, when we diagnose Merkel cell, we provide some prognostic parameters, including the mitotic activity and the depth of the tumor, and some things like that. And the mitotic rate for um, you know, say for a melanoma, the mitoses you may have just two or three mitoses, or for a bad melanoma, maybe five or ten mitoses in a millimeter squared, which on my microscope is about three and a half high power fields. Every microscope is a little different. Um, on Merkel cell, I've had I think my highest that I've seen was 140 mitoses in three millimeter. I'm mean, sorry, in one millimeter squared, or three and a half high power fields. So, in, 
amazingly more mitotically active than than melanomas and a lot of times you kind of have apoptotic cells and crushed cells so it can make counting mitoses kind of hard but let's see right here you can see there's a, a mitosis there there's one there here so they're they're all over the place in here lots of mitoses so to confirm the diagnosis um, what I like to do if it looks like this this is looks classic this looks very you know just on H&E I'm, I'm uh, I'm basically almost 100% certain that this will end up being a Merkel cell carcinoma, but, but it's such a bad diagnosis, we want to be totally sure. So one thing that I like to do is I use an immunostain, uh, cytokeratin 20, and cytokeratin 20 is positive in almost all Merkel cells, and it typically, not always, it doesn't have to do this, but it typically has this amazingly beautiful uh, perinuclear dot-like pattern, or, or people call this the Golgi pattern sometimes, but these dots, these really darkly staining, perfectly punctate round little dots that are in each cell right next to the nucleus. Look at that. Amazing. So you can see the nuclei here and you can see these dark dots of cytokeratin 20 staining which if I have a histology that's classic like this and CK20 positive I feel totally comfortable making a diagnosis of Merkel cell in that setting. Um, are there other things that could potentially mimic that? I suppose so, but very, very uncommon. Now, the, the main thing that you probably think of and that people talk about a lot is what about metastatic small cell carcinoma from the lung or from other, other places? Well, I'll tell you that I see Merkel cell carcinoma pretty commonly in my practice. And I've still to this day only seen one or maybe I think maybe two cases of metastatic small cell carcinoma from the lung in the skin. And in uh, at least in one of the cases, the patient already had known disseminated disease and the, the, um, the finding was already known. So it wasn't, uh, it, was, uh, it was metastatic, but it was because the patient had widespread METs and the, uh, the recognizing that it was a metastasis was, would not have made any difference in patient care. But I think that you know, we often worry, well, what if we uh, call something Merkel and it's actually metastatic small cell? So that's very uncommon, but the, to me, the easiest way to solve that is if you do a CK20, CK20 is, is a positive almost always in Merkel cell and very, very uncommon to be positive in uh, metastatic small cell carcinoma from the lung. So you're, you know, and you're already in a site where the, the, the odds of this being Merkel cell are much, much higher. So I feel like that is pretty confirmatory most of the time. Now, if the CK20 doesn't work or it's kind of, uh, kind of uh, wishy-washy, then I can do other stains. Neurofilament stain works very nicely and often gives you a similar dot-like pattern. And just of note, other types of cytokeratins like pan-cytokeratin will, will often stain with this dot-like pattern as well. So the dot-like pattern is not totally specific. Other tumors can do that. Um, and uh, it's not required either. You can have diffuse cytoplasmic staining that's not dot-like in Merkel cell carcinoma. So don't, don't think that you have to have dot-like staining, but this is the typical classic finding that you see. So neurofilament will work, and then you can use other things like synaptophysin and chromogranin, uh, which are neuroendocrine markers, and those will stain here too. But uh, I don't usually do those as first line uh, because if it looks so so good for Merkel cell, then I just do a CK20 and that solves the problem usually. And um, TTF1 is a marker that's going to be positive almost always in small cell carcinoma of the lung. And is very uncommon, I'm, I'm sorry, it's, it's also potentially positive in small cell carcinomas of other site, including Merkel cell. So it, T TTF1 positivity could potentially be seen even in a Merkel cell. If TTF1 is negative, that would be further argument against a metastatic small cell lung cancer. If it were positive, I would probably put a comment in the report that, you know, even though that can be seen in Merkel cell, the patient probably needs a imaging of their lung to make sure that there's not a small cell carcinoma there. So, but again, I don't usually resort to that as a first line. I do that if, if my CK20 is negative or if it's not very good, then I might add on a TTF1, a cytokeratin 7, which would stay in metastatic small cell carcinoma from the lung. And there are lots of different approaches to this. Immunohistochemistry is kind of a, uh, a some, somewhat of a science mixed with art because everyone has a different approach that they take with cases. But this is my approach, CK20, and it's staining a Merkel cell carcinoma.